Can I ask you a question, a serious question? If, I think you know a lot about Islam, yeah? What is stopping you? I mean, I don't mind asking you questions, yeah? But what is stopping you to accept Islam? What is the barrier that you think that if that is a, go, is a valid reason for me to not accept Islam now? Because I want to accept now Islam. Because I will get a good deed, by the way. You're not going to give me no money, but I will get a good deed. But it's good for you as well, you understand? And it's the best thing. Like I said to you, my wife is a revert, you understand? What is a valid reason that you think if I do die today, man, I forbid. Like I said, you don't know when you're gonna die. Don't let the Satan stop you. And the Prophet Muhammad told us, when a person wants to become a Muslim, Satan will come to them. He will put many barriers. Your family, you're not ready, you know, uh, or, or it's not the, the best time and all of that, yeah? And none of this reason is a valid reason before our Creator, our Lord. Remember, when I said to you, if I do save your life, if you are in the house and there is a fire, you would not say to me, Shamsi, give me time before I thank you. You would thank me straight away. You know, straight away you say, thank you, Shamsi. Likewise, you know, now you know the truth. I mean, you should accept it straight away. And step by step start learning. Understand? I think it's because the, like many religions, like God is the center of the religion. Like in Christianity, in like, in Islam, in Judaism, like, I find it hard to know whether Islam is the correct one because I believe the thing that stopped me being a Christian was the Bible because I found it hard to believe a lot of what was in the Bible. So then I rejected it and then I still believed in God in my heart but I didn't have like a, a religion to kind of follow, like to lead me. But like I'm more than finding out about Islam, I like it, but then I haven't even looked at like um, other religions. Other religions. So what if I'm just being naive and following Islam okay. for that? Well, I would say to you, that's a good question. There's over, I don't know how many religions out there, yeah? Allah, is the, you don't have to learn about every religion, okay? Why I'm saying that? When you look at Islam, because Allah is the most wise, you know? Allah knows that our life will not uh, enable us to study every religion or philosophy, yes? That's why when Allah sent down Islam, or Islam, Quran and so on, he gave us so clear proofs to come to a conclusion with certainty Islam is the truth. And there is no doubt if Islam is the truth, whatever opposes it, it must be the falsehood. For example, if I say my, my brother here, Jamal, Jamal is in speaker's corner right now recording me. Regardless how many people make philosophical ideas or philosophical arguments, Jamal is in China swimming under the water, I'm not going to accept it. And I don't have to spend my time to study their reasons. Understand? That's why I bring you back to my point. My point here is, when Allah created you, He created us with something called universal tools. What is our universal tools? It's our something called al-fitra, natural inclination, and al-aql, salim, sound reasoning, and our senses. These tools, when you come, when you, that's why you gravitate towards Islam. Why? You gravitate towards Islam, not just you. Majority of people, remember, look, let me, let me make something clear to you, which I'll show you why Islam is the religion of Allah SWT. There is a huge war against Islam. There's a what? A huge war. War against Islam online. You know, in the media it's crazy. In Australia, every single day, either 50 articles or lesser speaking bad about Islam and the Muslims. In Britain, there's many articles too. In France, in Belgium, in Germany, in, the, in, in I was going to say New York, in America. This is a huge war that has been waged against Islam. If it was waged against any religion or philosophy, that religion would, be, would die. There is no war against Christianity and Christianity is dying. Yeah. Like what Judaism, Judaism is a tribal God. Okay, it's a God that cares about the Israelites, the rest of the people, you just serve the Israelites, yeah? Which doesn't make sense to any human being, okay? So now, when you look at Islam, even there is a, there is a huge war against Islam, the fastest growing religion on the face of the earth and especially in the western world is Islam. Who's doing the job? We as the Muslims, we have to speak the truth. We are weak in comparison with the weapons and the media that our opponents possess. However, Allah mentioned that in the Quran system, 1400 years, it's Allah who sent He's a prophet with Islam in order for Islam to prevail all other religions, even if a disbeliever dislike it. So how 
especially women. They found that in, in America, in Britain, America, and Germany, and France, majority of reverts are women. And of course, they say women oppress, uh, Islam oppress women. So I'm saying that me, myself, when I observe that with my own eyes, and I look back to the Quran, it's a prophecy, I say, that's unbelievable. Look, to the war, look at the war against Islam. And Islam is spreading people who accept Islam. You know, even now, like I said, influencers online, famous people inclined towards Islam. Because sister, the war that is happening now against human nature, what Islam side, which when I say human nature, human nature inclined towards Islam. Islam goes in line with our human nature. That's why they, they were fighting a war against Islam, because they've noticed the only religion that is standing firm and is not backing down and is fighting back is Islam against the evil ones. That's what increased my faith. So Islam is the truth. That's one of them. But I will give you something which will give you certainty. It's, pay attention to this, yeah? I'm sorry for taking your time, by the way. No, yeah? I came here, so. Thank you very much for giving me your time. So Islam came to preserve five things. Yeah? Islam came to preserve five things. Islam came to preserve religion. What does that mean? It means in Islam, we're not allowed to pray to anything beside Allah. Even we're not allowed to pray to Prophet Muhammad. We're not allowed to be atheist, agnostic, polytheist, none of that. And I will tell you the reason, uh, the outcome of not believing in the true religion. So Islam, uh, uh, we have to preserve Islam. Secondly, Islam, so the outcome of pre preserving Islam and worshiping the true God, you start preserving your intellect. That's why in Islam, anything that harms the intellect is forbidden. Drugs, alcohol is forbidden. Because coffee also affects the intellect. We'll come to that. that. We'll come to it, yeah. <laughs> I'll come to coffee. I'm Algerian, you know, we love coffee. You know, you can't tell me about coffee, yeah? Please. I, I drank too today, so. <laughs> Yes, you will love coffee in Algeria. I think if you, if you stop Algerian man, a coffee comes out, no blood. They drink too much coffee. <laughs> they are strong. My mother, I remember, strong coffee. Black, strong, you know? No sugar. No sugar. She's like, you know, subhanAllah. She cleaned the, the whole area. <laughs> if you have power, mashallah. So, Islam, so anything, anything that harms intellect, is forbidden. Thirdly, Islam came to preserve wealth. That's why gambling and interest is forbidden. Fourthly, Islam came to preserve land. No, that's uh, uh, yeah, Islam came to preserve lineage and the families. That's why fornication, adultery is forbidden. Lastly, Islam came to preserve life. That's why anything harms our body, our life is forbidden. Killing innocent people is forbidden. Committing suicide. Sorry, committing suicide is forbidden. So look at when you worship the true God. The outcome of that, you have a good society. These very healthy things for our society. The opposite of that, which majority of our society allow it, not just allow it, glamorize it and propagate it, alcohol. Destroy us individually and collectively. Gambling, likewise. Interest, make the rich richer, poor poorer. is a slavery. Likewise, fornication, adultery, destroy families. Likewise, what is it? And this evil thing goes back to what? To not worshiping the true God. But yet, there is some people are benefiting from these vices, from alcohol, gambling, interest, you know, this prostitution and so on. Majority of times are those who are in power. And when I say those who are in power, it's not necessarily, I'm, uh, uh, I'm speaking about the politicians. No, those who are behind, you know, those in power charging, big companies, bankers and so on. They are making money from it. So they look at Islam as a threat for their business. Even though they know Islam is coming with a legislation that is good for us individually and collectively. But because they are evil, they don't care about humans, they care about money. So what they're going to do, because they have lots of money, they're going to utilize the media to make us look bad, to make Islam look bad, even though I've just broken it down that Islam is good for us collect individually and collectively. So the question you ask yourself, how man, how this man, Prophet Muhammad, who existed 1,400 years ago, who couldn't read and write, he came in the middle of death, from the middle of death, Mecca at that time. There was no civilization around him, you know? He came with a perfect way of life. On the other hand, we have these politicians, sociologists, scientists, studied in the best universities around the world, yet they cannot resolve the problems we are facing because Prophet Muhammad, his religion that he came with, with his five universal necessities that come to preserve, came from the Almighty Creator, who 
what's good for you and for me and for everyone. You know, when Allah legislates something, there's no evil desires involved. There's no bias involved. But when the humans uh, uh, legislate something, there's evil desires. I'll give you an example of that. I can go to a shop next to a shop of license. I can sell drugs, yeah? The police will come arrest me, yeah? They will not arrest the shopkeeper. Even though what I'm selling, it causes the same, what the shopkeeper in the off license is selling alcohol, it causes the same harm that I'm selling, the, the drugs cause. Likewise, majority of crimes is being carried out because of alcohol. So why I'm gonna get arrested, and the shopkeeper who's causing the same harm is not getting arrested. Because from alcohol, they're making a lot of money. There's high taxes. You see, that's why when you, have, when you, when you do not follow God, you contradict yourself. That's why the Islamic Sharia, you know, and I, let me clarify something. When we say Sharia, I'm not talking about these uh, Muslim ignorant ones who say we come in here, take over the country and force everyone to do this or that. That's not the Islamic teaching, by the way. That is a lie which the media propagates. Islamic Sharia, you take care of Sharia law. Sharia. Yeah. You don't say Sharia law because Sharia is a law. Sharia is a divine law. Okay. Yeah. What is exactly in that law? In that law, take care of your parents. Take care of your neighbors. Uh, worshiping Allah, the most... The, 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 the most important one, worship your creator according to his teaching. Likewise, take care of the environment. Likewise, have punishment for the evil ones, for the criminals. That's why every, uh, out of experience, sister, those who have problem with the capital punishment that Islam came with, sometimes they are ignorant about Islam or they themselves are criminals. For example, if someone murders someone here, you know where they put him? In prison. I mean, I mentioned that a long time. May Allah forgive me. I want prison in this country. This prison here is Holiday Inn. I'm not a uh, glamorizer, yeah? Don't go prison, okay? But literally, it's Holiday Inn. You, I remember when I was in streets, I used to eat once a day. You know, there three times a day. You have television. If you're good, they give you PlayStation 2 at that time. Then you have association, association, you play football. Then you go gym. It's a nice life. I don't have to pay tax. I don't have to pay bills. Especially the bills too high now. Rent. Uh, 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 rent. One second, wait, one second. It was sick You don't have to pay rent, you know, none of that. So, uh, so this is Sharia law. Sharia law is coming to protect us. Do you think there's any country with this? What's the country do you think is the most, like, living to the Sharia law the most? Saudi. I believe Saudi doing it. They have mistakes, no doubt, but, you know, they're not perfect. But Saudi is the most, con the, the, the country that implements Sharia. Do you think it's possible for it to be completely 100% Sharia? Yeah, inshallah, like, interest, interest, not allowed. They allow it, may Allah forgive them, which is haram. It's not permissible to do that. And when you look to Islamic Sharia, Wallahi is good for you and for me. It's good for everyone. But why people hate it? As like I said, either ignorant or themselves are criminals who want to do crimes and go, get free. For example, it, I've noticed when, I, when people have problems with Sharia, I said they, they, they argue and they defend the criminals more than the victim. I think, bro, what about the victim, man? The woman been, been raped and you're focusing about the guy. Doesn't make any sense to me. That's my point. My point is, when Allah legislates something, there's no bias. And the, the, I'll tell you what is the difference between Islamic Sharia, Sharia, uh, divine Sharia, no Sharia law. Sharia law doesn't make any sense. It's like saying, uh, insane human. Insane is Arabic term for human being, you know? So divine Sharia, divine Sharia, the example analogy I give, is like take, uh, 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 treating yourself with a natural remedy, or, because natural remedy, what it does, it, uh, it treats you from the roots. You know, when you go to some naturalist, he will tell you, look, let me see what you're eating, what is your diet, and so on. When you go to GP, he give you what? Paracetamol. What is the painkiller do? Painkiller does not deal with the roots, with the problem from the roots. Yeah, what, it, yeah, what it does, just maintain your, or manage your symptoms, or covers it up. But the Islamic Sharia deals with the roots problems. That's why we have something called Saddu Babu Dara'i. Whatever leads to evil, it's evil. So if I know by me bringing the singers here to this country and paying the money to gl glamorize uh, uh, killing and uh, being a gangster and uh, uh, disrespecting women and so on, I say, wait, wait. This is going to create a generation who start disrespecting their sisters and a woman. So I'm going to stop that. No, I give them money and glamorize them. Then I said, yeah, you, you make your own choice. No. I care about the people because sometimes people cannot make up, especially when they're in drugs and so on. You understand? So my point to bring you back, when you look to Islamic Sharia, when you look to the prophecy that Prophet Muhammad said, it gives us solid proof why Islam is the truth. 
and when it is the truth, whatever God and guess is falsehood. Christianity it doesn't make any sense. God became a man, that God died for your sins, but God created with the sin. The Bible, the Old Testament, God tells the, the, the Israelites to kill children because something happened 500 years ago. That is haram in Islam. Allah said, La Likewise, the King Herod. Huh? The King Herod No, it's in Samuel, Saul. Okay. Yeah, Samuel. Likewise, God regrets. Even the prophets, who are our best, uh, best example, the role model to follow, they are worse than Stalin. You know Stalin? Stalin, Mo, uh, what's his name? Uh, Hitler and so on. So the point here is that when you look to uh, subhanAllah, to Islamic teaching, and what Prophet Muhammad SAW came with and so on, subhanAllah is a perfect way of life. And you look to Hinduism, they don't even believe in God, it's a philosophy. You know, but Islamic is good for you, for you intellectually, spiritually, physically, socially, which is everything is connected. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he creates, Islam is not just for you, sister, or for me to be inside the mosque, no. Islam for the government to implement it, you know, to implement Islam. And the outcome of implementing Islam looked at the crime rate in Saudi and the Muslim countries and compared it to the Western world, which we call civilized country. I don't know what it I want to understand what does it mean civilized. Is to have a clean road? That's very good. But if you have a clean road and a man is sleeping, sleeping with, a, with an animal or animal, you know, it's cr just crazy stuff happening, you know, that's not a civilization. That's why Islam came to take people from true darkness into the true light and a fr from true backwardness into the true civilization. And there's many prophecies I can give you now to show you what Islam is the truth and why Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, is a true messenger of Allah. I can give you two incidents to show you Muhammad is not a liar. Okay? One of them. A man came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu This man was married to, to a woman that she doesn't like him anymore. And he wants to stay with her. He loves her. I mean, loved her and he wants to stay with her. So he used to follow her in the streets. She doesn't want him anymore. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu went to her and he told her, why don't you go back to him? And remember, she believes he's a prophet of Allah and she must obey him. That's the foundation, yeah? Then she said to her own messenger of Allah, are you telling me as a messenger of Allah or you just try to mediate? He said, no, if he was a liar, imagine I'm a liar, came to your prophet. And he's my friend, yes? And he's married to you or to another sister. Then what are we going to say? He's my friend, I'm going to be on his side. So I'm going to lie to you. He said, listen, God told me you need to go back to him. But what he said to her, I said, no, God never told me. I'm just trying to help. But if you want to go back, go back. If not, it's up to you. That is not characteristics of a liar. No way. Another incident. During his lifetime, he had a son called Ibrahim. His son died. Ibrahim died same day when there was eclipse. You with me? There was eclipse, yeah? His companions were not familiar with eclipse. So they tried to connect the dots. His son passed away, there is eclipse. So they said the reason there is eclipse is because Prophet Muhammad's son passed away. If he was a liar, remember the liar would try to utilize any opportunity to back up his claim. What he said, he said, no, it has nothing to do with no one's life, no one's death. When you see it, it's a sign from Allah. Go pray. What he did, he connected them to Allah. And there's many incidents. When you see this man is a truthful person, bear in mind, his own people used to call him a sadiqul amin, the trustworthy, the truthful person. So when you look at Prophet Muhammad's biography, Look at his legislation. Biography, his biography, how he lived. Biography. How he lived. Like the example I gave, the incident. But you know, in the hadith, so the even the Quran. the Quran. In the Quran, Allah said, Noon, wal qalami wa ma yasturun, ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon, wa inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon, wa inna ka la ala khuluqin azim. Allah said, Allah swore by his creation, because no, we have to take it over Allah. But Allah, if, want, if, if Allah wants to show us the importance of his creation, he will take oath by it. He said, oh Muhammad, you're not a crazy person. And you are upon a great conduct. When a, once Prophet Muhammad, wasalam, he was walking, a man grabbed him from behind and pulled him. His companions got angry. Even you can see the mark with the, of the pulling. He turned to him, he said, may Allah have mercy upon my brother Moses, Musa, the Prophet Moses. He said he was harmed more and he was patient. And Prophet Muhammad gave him what? The man said, give me some money. Prophet gave him a sheep. The man went back to his people. He said, I came from someone that does not fear poverty. He didn't say to him, you crazy man, how dare you? You know, even when you look at, uh, what they call it, uh, uh, 
uh, the story of uh, I was going to mention the story of uh, 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 Abu Bakr al Siddiq, his best companion. His best companion brought his father to Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad said, Why do you do this? You should call me. We go to him. He's older than us. You know? Even Prophet Muhammad, when he was in Medina, a Jewish man had a problem with a Muslim. So a Muslim, they want Prophet Muhammad to judge between them. Prophet Muhammad judged in favor of the Jewish man. If he was a liar, he's going to defend his Muslim brother. He's a follower. He said, No, he said the truth is with him. That's why even the Jewish people in the, at that time, they never used to go back to their rabbis because their rabbis used to take bribes. They say, no, let's go back to Muhammad. Even they don't believe he's a prophet, they say, no, go back to him. He will judge us accordingly with justice, you know? So there's many, many proofs I can give you. When you look to any religion, it is no way from God. So you don't have to, because you cannot spend all your life studying all religions. It's too much. But this is sufficient for someone who, with a sound reasoning, and I believe you are one of them, sound natural inclination, inclined towards Islam.